All right, welcome everyone to episode 303 of the Constant Calibrating Podcast. As always, I am your host, Josh Silverman, joined by my co-host, Justin Stanley. How you doing, hey Justin? Yo. I'm doing all right. Just had a pot pie. Everything's great. This is officially going to become the pot pie show. <laughs> well, I think- We uh, can do pot pie podcast. We, please, no. Let's not start another podcast. <laughs> please, I beg of you. Uh, we can't do the ones we're already doing. Uh, joining us- Pot th- pie. P- p- no. <laughs> Joining us this week, we have Aiden Swank, known to many as Lord Cuddlebear. Aiden, hey, everyone. How are you doing this evening? Welcome to the <laughs> show. I'm amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. I'm so excited to be here. I'm excited as well. Uh, you were one of the people, uh, as uh, people have been watching the show for like the last now week or so, and actually for the next couple of weeks, may or may not know, uh, our buddy Kevin Wallace uh, and I were just chatting one day. I made a throwaway comment like I, you know, he helps me get guests every now and again, but I made a throwaway sure. comment. Like, hey, uh, I kind of could use guests in October. I think I made it on Twitter, and he just was like, hmm. And the next thing I know, I'm in Trader Joe's, and he is just sending me text messages of people's profiles with, like, background information. And I'm Sounds like, right. and I'm just like, and, at one, and for one of them, it was yourself. And I said, oh, yeah, he seems interesting. Sounds good. Tell him. Tell him. And then I, that was the first text. And then I said, as I was typing, tell him, sure, I suddenly get an email notification saying that you were booked for the show. And I'm like, <laughs> wow, that was quick. <laughs> we, we try to move pretty quick and pretty fast on it. <laughs> no, I mean, it was awesome. Like, I was, it was, so it was awesome to, and then um, uh, what I did is then I'm like, okay, well, now I got this guy booked. Let me go check out uh you know your content and you have very rapidly in the last two weeks become one of my favorite streamers oh my goodness Aww. thank you that was like, super sweet <laughs> like like legitimately like uh the way i referred oh. to you at the beginning of the podcast before we went live is re- you're relentlessly positive <laughs> and <laughs> i mean so that is much. like the highest compliment as a person who, oh. uh, who strives for that goodness thank you so much i try yeah i try to that is one of the biggest reasons I like switched to streaming anyways was because it was it was my own. I could literally be whatever type of entertainer I wanted to be and it was wholly focused on um my personality. And that's why I I fell in love with it so fast. I mean, I think it's all that's awesome. So let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um we're going to kind of jump around to d- different points, different uh, things here. Sure. So uh for starters, where does Lord Cuddlebear come from? The name. So Lord Cuddlebear actually came from a friend when I was, I had to change my name and I can't even, okay, so I, never mind. I do remember. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the reason I'll tell you why my original Xbox Live name, why I got that account banned was my <laughs> buddy and I had this back and forth. We had back and forth stories. And of course, we were like 13, 14 year olds, right? And uh, on our profile every week, every Monday and every, I think, Friday for him, every Monday for me and Friday for him, we updated the next paragraphs in our bio of the story. Oh. (laughs) Well, being 14 year olds, we got a little carried away with the story. I don't even remember what the particular content was, but both of our accounts got banned and (laughs) like suspended for a minute. And then we got banned the next time because we didn't stop. And um, we actually had like a... They, we actually had like a decent following, which is really funny. We actually had quite a few people that message us every week. Like if we were late, they're like, where's the story? Where's the, where's the next part? And that went for like, I don't know, like two years or so. And anyway, so <laughs> once I got banned, I was like, well, what am I going to do? I have to have a new account. I got to come up with a name. And, um, I've always been a history fan. And then I had buddies that always just called me a big old cuddle bear and then i was just like oh man what if i was like the lord of cuddles and i was like and my buddy was just like what about lord cuddle bear and i was like oh there you go and that's kind of how that came about <laughs> uh, it's an awesome story i was just mostly asking because after uh, i i'm always just curious about people's names and, like the different context sure. but it was it was boiled down to uh the post i made on facebook about it mm-hmm. the one of the, one of the people who like made a lot of our art uh pointed out you know my handle online is bear punch and right which as i always explain to people as we've explained for a while is not uh not punching a bear it's a bear who punches just to be like the, the, the clarity <laughs> punch uh, from a bear punch from a bear kind of thing mm-hmm. so <laughs> yeah it, it was uh so it was like oh he, he pointed out like oh you know you have this other bear person and i'm like yeah that's it's the it's the subtle beginnings of the bear cinematic universe <laughs> right i saw that I and it's like, like now yes. we got to get uh, all we got to get us yeah. and uh like um 
like Captain Robert and like a couple oh, of I love Robert. <laughs> yes, they and, and a, a couple of other people like with bear related yeah. tales on here. And then Justin, who I you know oh, more or less stole the name Bear Punch from, uh, is going to be like the villain of our cinematic. Universe. Yes, yes, that's how we start our new our new TV show, our mini series. <laughs> yep. uh, as Lady Cuddle Bear says in chat, uh, I'm here for the BCU. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that's kind of yeah. So we're this is the, this is the origin story because. Uh, Everything needs an origin story. Absolutely. It started with... (laughs) Chime in at the intro. It started with a podcast. (laughs) And then just goats. That's how Tusk got made. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Fair Fair enough. enough. Uh, So... Sweet. Then let's talk about your... So what led you to streaming then? Because uh, uh, if I'm correct, you've not been doing it too long. You're pretty new to the streaming. Six months. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So what? So what led you to? Uh, you, you said you wanted something that was wholly your own, something you you know yeah. you ran and you owned, and you did your own shtick, whatever you wanted to. So what mm-hmm. led to that the decision six months ago to make this leap? So because I worked in entertainment, I mean the standard. I started shooting weddings and doing things like that, and um, when I was fourteen, and I really loved film. I got into a couple like workshops for it, and I was always a writer. And Mm -hmm. film just seemed like the natural take. I, since I was a little kid, I was like, I want, I want to be in film. I want to make films. I want to do that kind of stuff. And really what I didn't understand is like, I just wanted to be an entertainer and I wanted Mm. the ability and the age of YouTube hit and that, that whole realm of self-creation really flourished, but I still stick, I still stuck to the traditional route. You know, I still stuck to making films. Okay, got uh, got into internships, got on set, worked with these different people, worked with these different companies, and it, it was fine enough. Um, once I was graduating high school, I was I was fortunate in one aspect because I actually well the, the unfortunate turned into the fortunate. I got in a car accident, mm. and they basically said like, "Hey, you better get in shape, and you gotta you gotta maintain muscle mass, or you're gonna need surgery." Um, to maintain, you know, the position of your hip because it went completely off kilter and stuff. And it may oh. have been intense advice. It may have been more of a scare tactic. But what it led to was a year of PT. And I started working out, lost 70 pounds, got in shape, really got in that, that kind of stuff. That turned into people wow. going, hey, you could model. And I was like, <laughs> nice. I guess I'll do that then. <laughs> and so it led to modeling and acting and a ton of other face things that I didn't expect, even though that's what I wanted. And I worked in that for a few years. There was this ups and downs. I've had a couple production companies uh, take off and tank for various reasons. And then I tried the indie scene and that took off and then tanked again. And it was just this riding, you know, this like wave. Mm-hmm. And I kind of took a break, worked on a book, um, you know, and I haven't gone through all the edits for it and everything like that, but it's, it's virtually done. It's way too long. And that led into me just floating around, talking about it with friends and being like, Hey, what if I, what if I, what if I streamed? You know, I brought it up and I was like, that'd be fun. That'd be kind of cool. It's kind of, it's kind of unique, but I never watched one. I'd never watched Wait. a live stream at this point. So you, so you, so you had the idea, I want to be a streamer, but you hadn't actually seen right. that's, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it floated. It was here, right? Like I didn't actually act on it and at this point. And you know, a couple of months of me saying this because we tried the podcast thing too. And man, it was, as you know, with a, probably a lot of different types of podcasts as you come up with them, you're like, okay, let's get all the guys together. Let's get all the stuff. Let's do it. And then you're like, and it's just, you just hear all that, you know, you load it up and you hear one guy like, hey, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Another person like, hey, are we starting soon? Or mm-hmm. like, you get like all the people like, <laughs> guys, I'm having audio problems as they're yelling. Like that all was the reality. And it was just this technical issue after technical issue. Yeah, uh, and it oof. just didn't go. Whole, Trouble Trucks, a uh, little video kind of saying yes! like a bunch of streamers get together so and perfect. try to do a podcast. <laughs> yes, that was so real. I responded and, to that like yeah. straight up said to him, I'm like, how dare so you real. film like the entire, how dare you uh, try to summarize seven and a half years of constant calibrating into one stupid video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in this post and I don't like it. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's literally <laughs> so, what it felt like. I was like, oh, yep. this, this, this hurts on every level. It was oh, so close to home. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, so I went from that and, you know, I was just like, God, I want to do something creative. I love, that's what it always was. Right. And the issue I had with the film stuff, none of it was mine as much as people are like, well, you eventually get there. And I'm like, well, I don't want to be 50 when I get there. I don't want to be, uh, w- <laughs> way beyond where I, I, I 
you know, where I started by the time I get there, where I'm shaped by those that were just around me anyways, and whatever it was. And, um, one day I watched a stream between, uh, two folks, one, uh, I think both partners on Twitch name, uh, I'm stallion and the nerd violet. And they were doing okay. an interview talking about why they started. Five days later, I streamed. <laughs> I, I ordered my camera. I texted my best friend. I was like, hey, my camera's here on Tuesday or whatever. And I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stream. And he's like, what? <laughs> and I was like, this is the one I've been talking about it with for a while. And I was like, yep, I'm streaming. And then I just started. That was my first stream was fi- I ever watched was five days before. And then I just had a lot of catching up to do. And I just hit it full stop. So. I mean, fair enough. I mean, like, if you're going to jump into something, why not just literally jump into yeah. it? There's. No reason not to. Like, that was me streaming the first time. I think I, I'd seen, like, a bunch of Let's Plays and, like, recorded mm-hmm. content and stuff, but it was just a case of, huh, I think, it, what was it? What, shit, what was it? It was uh, SimCity, the the, okay. the last attempt EA <laughs> made at SimCity. Yes. Uh, and probably the last attempt they make at SimCity. And I was like, <laughs> huh, I hope so. what do you know? I actually, the game is, nobody can get into this game, but I was able to get in. I sure. guess I'll try this streaming thing. Like, I was just like, I guess, and yeah. like, yeah, my first ever stream was like 300 people watching because I was the only, one of the only people who could get into this damn game. I, ha- I had no idea what That's I was crazy. doing and I didn't do it again for five years <laughs> or so, four years or something <laughs> like that. Because I knew right. how to capitalize on, uh, right. on everything. <laughs> when no one else wanted to jump on it. But it was like one of those things where it was just like, huh. Let's see what this is like. I just and I just right. jumped into it with absolutely with the bare minimum knowledge of what that entailed. And yeah, sometimes you got to take those leaps. I'm trying to do the battle operations to Gundam, and it just ain't working at the moment. <laughs> oh, oh no! What, what, what are you trying to do with it? <laughs> just stream it. Oh, Hopefully, just try to stream. <laughs> No, I say that, but then I actually got the guy who wrote the wiki for it to jump in my stream. So. I mean, that's something. like its own like type of victory. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is. He's giving me pointers. It was great. That's take, hilarious. Take what you can get from it. So then, yeah. uh, so you know, what has been your experience then? You've been doing it for six months now. What would you say has been yep. your overall experience and like your takeaways as someone just new to this, not even particularly old field, but. Yeah. Man, well, so it is, well, it's wild. It's mm-hmm. so wild. You have so much freedom and that, and it actually took me a while to realize how much freedom I had. I was like, Wait, I can do a, I can do a lot with this. Like, I can mm-hmm. do a lot, a lot with this. Not only that, I can integrate whatever I create here into YouTube. I can integrate it into other shows, the podcast, like this. Mm-hmm. Um, it's I can literally build a brand that's just me, Aiden and Lord Cuddlebear. Like, this is my brand is me. I'm my brand, etc. Like, and that's like one of the rare times I can do that without anyone really. If I don't want something, someone to interfere with it, they I, I can just say no. Mm -hmm. And I do, I turn them away. I've turned people away that have tried to do that. And I'm just like, no, I don't need you a part of this. I, you know, if you want to be friends, I'm always here for that. But if you're not here to mutually like work together and be together, then what's the point? Um, you know, and and so I've never had that before because I've always had two in other scenarios. Uh, you know, you have to do something for a producer that you don't particularly agree with, or you have to like, uh, man, I got made. I'm not even joking. So we were one of the the three slated production companies on a music video. I'm one of the producers for my company. We got hired out here to do a music video. As a producer, I got made an assistant of the artist. Okay. By the lead producer, by the lead exec. Okay, that doesn't yep. seem that and he was like, Well, his assistant come in, come in. We don't have anyone else. Here, uh, here's his orders. This is what he needs. I need you to stick with him for the day. And I'm like, You guys are technically my bosses right now. And I'm like, This is <laughs> but this is the most ridiculous thing ever. I'm technically a producer. That's that is absolutely ridiculous. That's I don't I don't yeah. even understand. <laughs> yeah. And so and when I talk to other friends at like the same level or just ahead of me or have just gone past, they're like, Oh yeah, things will get like that'll happen. I'm like, why? I was like, I'm like, why am I like, that is such an expensive assistant too. I'm like, why are you doing this? Like, <laughs> like, yeah, that feels like you just sense. like incredibly, uh, I'm assuming overpaid for the role kind of thing. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it made no sense to me. I was like, what is this? And then, like I said, going back though, like this, no, none of that. Like I, I'm, I'm just, I can do what I want and I can learn at my speed, which is without someone like going like, Hey, you got to slow down. And I'm like, cause for me, when I, my, <laughs> the lady cuddle bear, my fiance is in the chat could attest to this. I go pretty fast. <laughs> like when I like something, I'm like, 
okay, cool. We're just getting every, we're all the energy, all the excitement. We're, we're doing this. Like, let's, let's watch all the YouTube channels on it. Let's read all the books. Let's watch all the people we can. And I could do that at any speed I wanted to here. And it was like, it was like revolutionary. Like it was amazing. Like that's never happened in any field I've been a part of. So it's been amazing. Well, particularly in the entertainment field, because that's like the thing I think a lot of people still don't quite understand about streaming Mm -hmm. as whether it's a hobby or a job or something else entirely. It's, it's all entertainment, whether you're an IRL streamer, whether you are speaking about mental health, whether you are a talk show host, whether you're a gamer, whether you're a let's player, whatever like style of thing you do, Mm -hmm. it's, it's all some form of entertainment. So you are an entertainer and it's, it's different even than, I mean, we've had YouTube for a long time, but sure. Twitch, Mixer, Facebook Gaming, mm-hmm. all these platforms where you're live is such a completely different thing. It's you're constantly in essentially an open mic night, you know, yeah. uh, particularly in the fact that, yeah, you you probably have, you know, your own community and you have your regulars and stuff like that, but it's mm-hmm. still you are constantly trying to appeal and pull new people in while maintaining your current, you know, people while yep. not betraying who you are. And it's like all of these balls in the air constantly and again um you're either trying to maintain insightfulness or a humor or again whatever your yeah. shtick is and right and then at the end of the day you own it all and you've you've yep. made all the choices you made you, you you've said the right thing that's on you you said the wrong thing that's on you yep. and it's yep. it's so hard to explain to people particularly anyone more familiar with traditional media what it's like doing this. I've been doing it for seven and a half years and I mm-hmm. still can't <laughs> explain half right. the damn time right. what it's like. Well, we're in such a progressive industry now though. This is such a new, the what we're getting with the live streaming becoming so mainstream is it's such a new uh, place. It's a new space. And that's what, one huge reason I was like, I need to jump on this. Mm-hmm. I, I, I noticed, I was like, okay, this is something that's so new that I could actually foundationally become a part of it and change it so that down the road, hopefully that positive impact I made lingers by all the people that, you know, started streaming because they saw me, Mm -hmm. you know, because that's, that's, that's kind of the idea is like, you hope that you become big enough that you make an impact. But if you can do that, when it starts, when it's in its, when it's still in its, its core beginning, you have so much opportunity to affect it literally forever. And even if it's a tiny percentage, that tiny percentage doesn't exist in other industries that are already set in stone. And it's way harder to chisel at that rock and break it to reform new, like clay or whatever on it, whatever analogy or whatever you want to put on it. <laughs> like, yeah, you made a comment just there that maybe like, it's made a bell go off my head that was like, huh? streaming is sort of in a weird way like a like a, li- a little a, a no buy-in pyramid scheme because right. it's, well but it's the idea of you want to get in yeah. at the, like your comments you want to get in the fa- in the you know at a, a foundational level so you mm-hmm. have the most success but then you're pulling in other people because you are uh people are seeing you and being like oh this guy this person this individual is mm-hmm. doing this ergo I, I bet i could do this or yep. stuff like so you're essentially like, and then those people uh, are probably like, yeah, I, I, hey, I've had great success, but hey, if I hadn't watched, you know, Lord Cuddlebear or this person yeah. or that person, I wouldn't have been into this. It's like this weird, like, yeah, and it, it's not literally that, personal but, experience, not streaming, but pyramid schemes. I, I have a lot of experience with uh, <laughs> with pyramid schemes. I've been, uh, I would love to say I wasn't tricked, but I was absolutely oh, no. freaking tricked into. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I still remember it by name. There's literally a person who lives down the street from us who actually sells for the particular thing still. And every time I, every time I take the kids on a walk, I see this logo on this guy's truck and I'm like, oh no. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> Don't worry. I was only like, you know, 23, 24 and it only cost me like $2,500. Nothing major. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we've, we've, we, 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 we all make some sort of choices. So yeah, no, I mean, streaming oh, is thankfully not a there. literal pyramid scheme. No. Well, and it's so brilliant because really your drive and motivation and mm-hmm. whatever it is you put into it and your, I, t- I try to tell as many people this is as possible. There is a curve to this, to this industry that is really set by what you're willing to put into it. Mm -hmm. If you, if you don't put, if you just click live and that's all you do and you're still having a good time, I'm super glad. If that's what you love doing, 
keep doing it. If that's all the success you want out of it, great. But people that are like, I want to be at the top. I'm like, well, then you better start watching every streamer. That's a, you better start watching a bunch of streamers at the top, reading their stories, listening to their podcasts, going back to their old streams. Look where they started. You better be reading. You better looking through their old blogs. That's a huge thing I started doing was looking up people's old blogs and mm-hmm. vlogs from when they were like in year one and two, because that's where I'm heading. And I'm trying to see what they did and what mistakes they talk about so I don't make them. Hmm. And if you look just ahead of the curve, I've noticed with this business especially, you have that opportunity because everyone's online. Mm -hmm. Everyone's there talking about it. That is the job. And so you can't say I don't have a library of resources to look after. It's only how much willingness you're you're going to put into it to to motivate yourself forward by by emulating others that have – found success in it and again success is relative of course like it depends on what really what size you want some people really do just want their 20 to 30 community members that come in and just talk um others do want the tens of thousands of viewers in it to become a full-time career of true valuable entertainment so it just depends on how what you want but there are ways to get there by studying yeah, I mean, it's it's one of, definitely one of those mediums. I mean, every I think most uh, jobs, most career profiles, if you're willing to put the research in, that's you know, a, yeah. a, it's a, a good thing. Mm-hmm. But streaming is just one of the things because it's so new, it's so fresh yep. that research will always research into this, taking the time as you said to look at what other people did and what other people are doing and stuff like that will always give you a leg up. There's yep. There is absolutely, if you want to turn this into some kind of career, there's no downside. What I always tell people mm-hmm. uh, who ask me, uh, how do you like have, a, how do you have a successful podcast or streaming thing? I mean, if they ask me how to have a successful podcast, I usually tell them to go watch like OK Beast or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but if they tell me to how to have like a successful streaming career and something like that, I do actually, there's a few people I always refer them by. Uh, one of them is like an old friend of ours, Ashney Christ, because, uh, oh, yeah. because uh, you know, she is a person who was told right off the bat, she was a terrible streamer and would have no success. Mm. Just I'm like, I'm, I'm dumbing it down a little bit, but that was pretty much what she was told. Sure. And she took it to heart and she walked away from it. And then yep. she came back and decided to experiment with like positivity and like uh, talking yeah. to people about experience, talking about her own experiences. And she ended up building this really strong community to the point that she's now – you know, publishing books and stuff like that. And she, you know, she, she publishes books and she just got some scholarship to start her stream coach business. And Jeez. which is so cool. And, but which the thing she preaches, a lot of people will come into her uh, threads and be like, well, yeah, I mean, but you know, you originally were a person who, you know, you had five to 10, five to 15 viewers and that was about it. And mm. you were striving for marketability and stuff like that. And now, you know, you have hundreds upon hundreds of people watching you. You have massive followings. And one of the yeah. things she always says is even with a small following, if I could go back in time and show 15 viewer Ashney what I know now, I could have made right. that, I could have made her successful because I now, I've done the research now to understand how to turn that into a viable career, even yes. with a small community because. <laughs> If you do the research, if you're if you market mm-hmm. stuff, if you have an understanding of this business, if you meet and it, a lot of it's meeting the right people, and there's luck, obviously. Yep. But if yeah. you go through all these steps and you you take the time, it doesn't matter if you have you know a quote unquote tiny community, you can yep. still make that a full time career. It's absolutely. It's just streaming is not going to be your only thing. It's right. going to be making videos. It's going to be making videos on multiple yep. platforms. It's going to yep. be producing some sellable thing. In her case, books, and some other mm-hmm. in your you know, other case might be a person making a web comic. It might be yep. all of this, literally. Yep. <laughs> so. Well, even the biggest guys, they they hire editors to make clips at this mm-hmm. point. They they but mm-hmm. they do make those clips. Mm-hmm. They do um what what what's his name? Um Fortnite streamer is it is it scissors, I think. He okay. started he got really big because he made the de- he was the guy that started the uh death run maps on mm. Fortnite. And then all of a sudden he got big enough that people were like, well, this is like a really good thing. Let's be the guys that uh, that beat those. And they put content out for the first people that beat it. And those people got thousands, if not tens of thousands of subscribers on on YouTube and stuff like that because they were the first ones to beat this unique custom game. And But that's content. That's yep. more content. Mm-hmm. And even if it was a custom thing, it is now a main – it's like a main game mode type thing I think now. And um, I was just listening about this on a podcast actually. So I was just like I'm trying to refresh some of that information. But <laughs> – it's it's amazing because it's just a form of content. Tifu, Ninja, all those guys, they have YouTube, they have clips, they have everything out there. Mm-hmm. They're not just banking on their stream. 
It is nope. so much more. It's interviews, live talking, public speaking. It's ad work. It's it's and that is the big thing. There's so many sources of revenue that if you don't have an accountant, you will die. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have to you have to be constantly aware, and it's it's definitely because of yeah. the nature of what this business still is. It is one that. You know, you, you have to, you have to keep moving. You have to keep the intensity, mm-hmm. keep exploring again, all these different things. But as I always say to people is, yeah, keep, keep exploring stuff, but also learn when to slow down every now and again, because <laughs> you, Hey, I'm telling you this, Le- learn when to slow down because what? you will, your, uh, <laughs> your mental health can suffer and you can burn, you can burn yourself out rapidly. It's what I, one of my issues I no. had. No, <laughs> no, it's not. One of my issues I had early on. I may on. have done that this summer. <laughs> <laughs> really? You already yeah, had, you, you had your first, uh, first I'd, brush I'd with burnout? Crash. Yeah, I had a crash. It was like comboed with my work and stuff because I'm a full-time regional manager for a dog service company too. Mm. And so, whoops. But I did take <laughs> some time and everyone was like super understanding. I never take like full breaks. I yeah. got like a night or two off of streaming and then I just make up for it in a different way. And it's it's not that I stop working. It's just a time to like internalize and absorb differently. You know, I don't, I don't like, it, stopping my stream doesn't mean I'm not at home doing something that will improve it later usually is the idea at least so well yeah i mean because it's essentially again because you're always on if you're if the camera's on Mm -hmm. you're on and even if you're uh, an always on personality because that's kind of how i am i'm i'm I'm, same i'm always a you know loud talking constantly uh all kind of you know kind of mindset but there's a difference between doing that with my wife and kids or friends and stuff like right. that. And literally when this, you know, lovely blue light is around my camera, it's it's a completely <laughs> and utterly different thing because sure. mm-hmm. it's almost like it sucks a bit of your energy out, even though you're doing the same thing you do in your day to day life because it's it turns into, oh, I'm talking to you. Oh, what's the numbers? Oh, okay, I'm talking to the guest over here. Oh, mm-hmm. I gotta look, you know, oh, what's you know, it's it's sure. there's so much more going on that you have to think about. That yes. it just makes you aware that Oh, I'm here to talk to these people. I'm here to entertain. Is like mm-hmm. it it's just doesn't come as naturally. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's 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 you can be the most natural speaker, the most natural entertainer in the world, but that camera comes on, and sometimes just just nothing comes yep. out for a second because you've 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 been streaming for you know t- ten days straight, never taking a break, doing right. you know four to eight Oof. hour streams every single time, and it's like suddenly you're just like you're on day twenty one, and you're like. <sighs> How about muffins? <laughs> yeah, right. Oh my gosh, no joke. Well, I saw someone early on when I started streaming. They were like, just completed my 1,000th day in a row. Now time to take a vacation. And mm-hmm. they were like a big streamer. I, I to this day, don't re- even remember who it is. I, I know, know who you're like talking R- about though. It's like an RPG focus person, I think mm-hmm. too, like fantasy and RPG. And they went and took a vacation and now they're back streaming again. And I remember they had like one and a half million followers on Twitch. They're a, they're a big person. And I'm like, well, I would hope so. I, I, I mean, a thousand days straight or whatever. I was like, jeez, mm-hmm. I can't even uh, imagine that of streaming. And I'm like, not only that, the history you've been a part of in this very fast new industry in four years at that point, like, yeah. That's a lot that's changed. Mm-hmm. That's a ton that's changed. Yeah, it's I I, I re- still remember reading that and just being like, initially I was like, okay, cool, and then I paused and I was like, no, that that's ab- absolutely an absurd thing to read about. Yeah, I couldn't do it. No, no. way. Mm. No, I <laughs> think my record when I was streaming heavily is I think I did like. <laughs> uh, I think I did ten days of streaming once and Jeez. D- doing like. And I was only doing like two to three, maybe two, two to four hours streams okay. at a time kind of thing, just because sure. I, I, I'm i a parent and stuff like that. But again, like that made me feel so drained. So I can't imagine, because like, uh, if I remember right, the guy was doing like, they weren't like a thousand days of, you know, again, like two to three hour streams. They were long streams they as well. They were full streams, yeah. Like they he was like doing, full, you know, yeah. eight plus hour streams where he was pretty much, mm-hmm. he would go to bed. He'd wake up the next morning, eat breakfast on stream and just start his whole thing. And then just he would go. just take breaks yep. to take, you know, eat his meals Oof. throughout the day kind of thing and just keep That's it going. so much video game too. Oh my goodness. I, <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. I don't think I've oh. played that much in, in a three year period. I don't think I've played that much video games since I was like 15 to 16. Like, and <laughs> right. even oh, then I'm yeah. not sure. Like, yeah. 
even my teens, I don't think it's, yeah, it just blows my mind what some people do. But again, you find your thing sometimes and you do it. Mm-hmm. Also, he in that, you know, three plus years learned probably a lot. And it's the same thing as you oh, know, you, the goodness, whole idea. You put 10,000 hours into something to become a master. It would be impossible to argue that person, you know, was not did not, you know, master no essentially. <laughs> yeah. No <laughs> joke. What? <laughs> Because you know they're not when they're getting off in those couple hours before they go to bed, do whatever they're doing. You know they're not just like, oh, okay, uh, all, everything streaming related is gone out of my brain. No, they're still <laughs> yeah. probably processing, learning, editing, uh, changing their OBS or whatever they use. Or, you know, they're ma- manufacturing everything to perfect that next day. And it's for that person literally the next day. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, I do every other day. And roughly, roughly the way I've worked it out, it's every other day. And... And sometimes I sit there and I'm like, as much as I love streaming, I love hitting, going live. I love talking to the rain. There are days where I'm like, I don't want to do this. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I do, I do, I do not want to do this. <laughs> and I just, <laughs> it, no matter how much you love it, you just, you're like, I feel like crap today I, I, or I have a headache or whatever. And then you're like, okay, but this is a job still. Like as much as it's, you know, the people, <laughs> I kind of laugh when a lot of people are like, it's it's a hundred percent not about the money ever. It's never about the. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay. You're telling me right now. Someone said, hey, I'm willing to short you. I, I will give you. I will contract you for forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars to only do this. You would say, no, because that's not what it's about. And I'm like, come on. Like yeah. I I know I would. I know a hundred percent that'd be something I'd I'd invest myself into. It's because it allows you that those funds those things like that it's it's not evil it's not malicious it's what lets you build your foundation it's what lets you build whatever type of community you are trying to build and the fact that we have an opportunity here to build a live based community we can be live entertainers and in a lot of cases some of these people are quote unquote famous and they can talk you can just go talk to them mm mm-hmm. That when it not not just once a year at a con that you paid forty dollars to go get a signing from. Mm-hmm. No, it's it's every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. <laughs> it's it's whatever it is. It's so weird because we have this unique thing, but it takes money to do that. Yep. The higher the the more money you have, the higher production value, the more impact you can make, and that is the reality of it. And and again, relative. There are people that genuinely are not trying to turn this into a career, but this is for those that are, you know, those that are like, this is something I want to do for my life. I want to be a professional entertainer, whether that means I'm a professional esports player, or in my case, I like to just be an entertainer. I like to be me and be in front of people and make them have a, and have them have a good time, a place to smile, a place to just hang out. And not everyone's trying for that kind of thing, but for those that are, let's be real. Finances are huge help. Mm-hmm. Well, it's the people who make the you, every now and again you'll see somebody parrot the same old adage of you know money money won't solve all your problems kind of thing, right? And then there's always obviously the the taken response, which is no, literally money will solve all of my problems because right. that's the thing is no, I don't necessarily expect uh, mm-hmm. with what I'm doing to ever really make like a you know I, I'm a I'm a dad. I have a wife. I have, you know, I have right. two kids. I have no expectation that anything really the streaming podcasting will ever support my family entirely. Sure. But what it can do, what the money I can pull in from this, whether it's a tip, whether it's a sponsorship agreement, whether it's something, maybe it pays for that month of hosting for the podcast. Right. Mm-hmm. So it pays, it start, maybe it starts paying for, uh, let's say, constant calibrating gets funded. So for a whole year, all the hostings taken care of well. Now Justin and I and whoever on our team can be like, hey, you know what? We actually can now do another podcast idea we've had because yep. this one's already paid for, so we don't have to worry yep. about it. Or yes. I want to add a fourth webcam, you know, kind of thing to my stream. Yeah, to add a, a, sure. a, but there's all of those like little things that you you just people don't necessarily think about because money will solve every problem with streaming, even if you are just doing it as a hobbyist, because mm-hmm. whether it's a career hobbyist or something in the middle, because mm-hmm. Everything we're doing here takes money from your, from your internet to your equipment to mm-hmm. the games you're playing to whatever else. Absolutely, no, a hundred percent. And you know, I know, I know some people too. As crazy as this is, it blows my mind. I know some people that if they didn't start streaming when they did, and let's, I, 
I think the current case without naming names, I think they, they were telling me they made like 700 a month or something at this point, mm-hmm. right? They'd been streaming for two years already. They make about 700 a month. Uh, they didn't even know the small business they were working for just went under and okay. it was just gone. They just didn't have a job. And so their actual job just went under. And if they didn't have that $700 coming in, all of a sudden they're like, wait, I'm actually, I'm stressed, but I'm okay. Yep. And mm-hmm. if they didn't have that amount, you know, even though it does fluctuate, I think they said between like five and 900, of course, depending on the month, but that's just what it is. But if they didn't have that, and I'm like, see, that's, that's what even a small time position on this. And they only stream three times a week for a few hours. You know, they've just been doing it long enough. They have, they have a strong enough foundation and community that always <laughs> support them to that level. And I was like, that's amazing. That's something I like don't really hear about in a lot of other places outside of small form entertainment, such as like blogging and things like that. But, but even then, like this is such a, it's such a unique thing. I don't know. Like I just, you don't get that in too many other places, I suppose. No, you don't. And I mm-hmm. mean, it's, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> wow. My throat just closed off there for a sec. That was, a, no, you're good. that was a fun sensation. Uh, no, but it's, <laughs> it, it, I, Hey, I, I almost died on stream for a second there. No big deal. <laughs> no, don't do that. Well, <laughs> it's like, it's a weekly occurrence. I know last week I did a stream with a concussion. It was, it's, it's been, a, it's been what? a thing. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, the stream we did with, uh, with, uh, Aaron Lynn from, uh, uh, Torben from, uh, DreamHack. I, yeah. uh, the day before went to the children's Museum with my kid and the clearance in this one area was six feet, except uh, around the outer edge, it was four feet. And I just stood okay. up too quickly without thinking about it and just smashed my head. I still like have cuts all over oh, my no. top of my head and stuff. So mm-hmm. it was just one of those things where I'm like, I'm fine. We, my wife and I were joking that I had a concussion. And then before I went to bed that night, I'm like, you ever get nauseous where like the nausea is right behind your eyeballs? And she's like, yeah, no, you have a concussion very clearly. Oh, no. So it's, I've, I've, I've had like a headache now for like a week. So now I'm choking, now I'm just choking the death on a stream. So it's, it's <laughs> oh, just, no. my throat decides to ran a little close up. It's, it's all good. It's, oh, it's, what it is. <laughs> so, no, I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say. No, oh, you got no. That, nothing. It's, 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 as Justin can attest, weird shit happens to me with my body sure. all the time. It's, it's, <laughs> I am a medical mystery. Uh, and yeah, yeah take uh, that out of context. <laughs> mm. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. I know you, yeah, behind the eyeballs, it's, 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 it's a weird, ex- it, I've had a concussion one time before that, and that, yeah, it's, it's not a great sensation. Uh, Jeez. so let's talk more about your streaming path and stuff like that. Let's, uh, sure. turn to that. So what for you, you know, we talked about, you know, you, you know, you own it, you do what you want, but, mm-hmm. What has been like one of your favorite moments over the last six months or one of your favorite experiences? Ooh. Something, either a, maybe a bit you did or some mm-hmm. kind of thing you brought to the experience that you just afterwards you're like, you're still thinking about it. So when I landed on, because I came in as Lord Cuddle Bear, you know, mm-hmm. and I thought, you know, I love the history thing and stuff. And I stuck to... You know, I stuck to like playing like a lot of fantasy games and stuff like history <laughs> games for a while there. And I was like, you know what though? That's not the only thing I like. And Noisy actually just nailed it. He actually nailed that's it. That's why I now. asked the question because I've, I've seen it. <laughs> yes. That's, and that is exactly what it was. What happened was, is I watched another streamer and I'm a month in, right? Uh, maybe three weeks to a month in. And this person became like, his name's Double Agent Smith. He is one of my absolute favorite streamers. He is such a crazy brilliant entertainer it is just an entertainment show and what ended up happening it was amazing watching him he turned this moment when i subbed to him into this brilliant thing he made me feel super special I'm like wow no one's done that yet and i have like eight nine ten subs out at this point right and i was like wow this guy like just made sure everyone celebrated the moment i was like i need to do that and then live nighting came about so what i do is i live night <laughs> as the lord of the cuddle kingdom every one of my subs and if it's like a group of gifteds i knight them under the name of whomever gifted if it's an individual i <laughs> i knight them personally i give them this jovial um just show because that's what they've done they've going back to the finance thing they just supported me financially they just gave me an incentive to up the production value the least i can do is give them a really really 
insane thank you because I don't know what else I can do. It, me just <laughs> right? saying thank you just doesn't feel like enough. And this was one of those things that I was like, I love doing this. I, I like, turned from the games. What's up? I was about to say, you're doing more to that. You're making them a part of the show. Mm-hmm. Well, and they are. That's exactly what they should be, is a part of the show. Because if they're going to support it in any other medium, if you're putting finances in it, your name's on it, or you're in it, or you're part mm-hmm. of it, why not do that here too, in this medium? Why not make them a true part of it? And that is exactly my take on it. Make them, because they are brilliant folk that come by and do that. And so make them realize that that is the truth of it. They are part of the Knights of the Round Cuddle. They sit at the table <laughs> and they, and they, you know, they, they're ready to be the army that defends positivity. And I'm like, I'm so here for that. And I realized I had nothing to do with what games I played. It's all about the the brand and the setting that I that I manifest. It is the Cuddle Kingdom. Who cares if I'm playing Call of Duty or if I'm playing a medieval RPG or something? It, the game doesn't. It's it's not even about the game at this point. It is. It's about w- where you're transported to. It's about the Cuddle Kingdom, and that's why the live nighting came about. And those are like some of the best experiences I ever have as doing those. Well, it's the live theatrics of it all. Of it all, mm-hmm. that I mean, again, not to dumb this down at all, but any sure. idiot can play video games on a stream. Any, any <laughs> person, I don't mean that as a, I'm just being clear. I don't mean that as a as a disrespectful term that people who just sure. play video games and stuff. But right. that was how I did it. I was an idiot who just sat there, <laughs> didn't really talk, and I just played video games, and that was it. Sure. Uh, but it was when I started delving to the theatrics of it, and you know, yes. again playing that character, uh, looking at you know the the you know let's players and stuff that I watched before I got into streaming, and you know, seeing you know, yes, it, they they are themselves, but then themselves turned up a notch. So mm-hmm. that you you know. You've taken a character essentially of yourself, built yeah. it up into something else, and then you do this whole thing that uh, that adds so much more to to the experience and again to to your viewers. Yep. And one, it makes them part, as Justin said, makes them part of the show, makes them part of the experience. But it also encourages the next person to sub to you. It's also just yes. from a pure marketing standpoint. Yep. If if I'm watching someone get live knighted by this streamer and do this whole thing, I, I'm just like, oh, shit. I kind of want to just give this guy a few bucks because I just want this experience now myself kind yes. of thing. So, um, yeah. Because it's, I was already going to watch your stream uh, because, you know, you were coming on the show and I like to, sure. you know, know people. I, 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 I'd like to. I don't always, but I like to know a little bit about people and stuff like that. If Kevin's telling me someone should come on a show, I just trust his opinion. Uh, <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Trust, but, uh, but, but still, I like to do a little bit of research, but it was one of those things where you actually knighted Kevin. Uh, right. And he, I think he retweeted the, um, he retweeted the, uh, the knighting video, the clip. And yep. I saw that and I was just like, okay, this is fucking great. Uh, I'm like, this is awesome. And I yes. just, yeah, I, I tuned in and I, th- I still remember yeah. the f- then the first time I tuned in, speaking of theatrics, you have some like makeup on, you have some like character, you, you're doing like <laughs> yeah. like a makeup stream or something with, you don't usually see guys do as right. much of. So that's a whole other level of theatrics and pulling yep. in an audience and stuff like that and doing, uh, you know, a unique take on something people experience with. And I'm just mm-hmm. like looking and I, I think I... Uh, I texted a picture of your stream at one point to Kevin, and I'm just like, "You picked a good one here." <laughs> it was like oh, <laughs> something to that effect. No. Because and oh, yeah, okay, I, thank I, you. I don't Thanks watch so as, much. No, it's, I'm, I'm just saying, like, I don't watch a lot of streamers anymore. But I try to. Sure. As when it, and you thankfully also stream on a schedule I can watch, which I sure it's not something <laughs> controllable, but it's right. actually like something like I actually like I can actually tune in. So I I've just yes. appreciated um like over the last couple of weeks just watching like how you do stuff mm-hmm. the other side of things what i i like about you is what we talked about at the top of the show that you are relentlessly positive um <laughs> how do you find it uh being positive oh uh, your your lovely fiance uh-huh. saying he's a great makeup model <laughs> oh she loves doing it she's so good at the makeup it's so fun and yeah we've had a couple of weeks that are hit or miss and she sure. gets herself so beat up and i'm like you know what who how many others are doing this though? I was mm-hmm. like, who cares? People enjoy it. You made me a pumpkin last week. So who cares? <laughs> <laughs> you- I was like, come on. Like, that's amazing. It doesn't matter. Yep. So- I mean, that- that's my favorite thing. Uh, like looking through mm-hmm. somebody like your clips and videos, like uh, on your stream and just oh. seeing all these different, like makeup things. I'm just like, what? the? <laughs> it, it, but that's the thing. It's, it's like, regardless of how it comes out, it's still an enjoyable, wonderful experience. Exactly. And I, I, as a viewer, I enjoy it. So, I'm yeah. glad. 
my so. appreciation to both of you for that. But uh, mm-hmm. I was to say is you're a very positive person. Um, sure. I hopped in your stream uh, one time and I was chatting with you and I think I was bummed out because my job searches was like, it's been having issue. It was like something okay. like that. And you're playing like, I want to say dead by daylight. I, I maybe he was dead by daylight. Yep. I remember. Yeah. yeah. And you're interacting, but you're interacting with your regulars and stuff like that. And you're talking to mm-hmm. them. And meanwhile, I, you know, yeah, you, you recognize my name and stuff like that, but still I'm the new guy coming in and yeah, you're still managing to interact with them. You're still managing to be your, your positive self during things. And then also you're like giving me all this uplifting advice and shit like that. You're just throwing out there as I'm saying stuff. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, yeah. What the fuck is going on <laughs> right, right now? Because you're just like slipping. But the thing is, some people have this issue with streaming. Um, uh, where yeah, a difficulty finishing stories. You're you're telling a story. Sure. You read what somebody says, and then it throws you off. And you're actually like, for the most part, you're you're managing to like weave in your story with talking, and it, it it's cool. So how do you find that? How do you find your your style, like, is that a style that you've had since you started? How you communicate mm-hmm. with people in general, or is that just something you've been kind of practicing at since you started the streaming thing? So it's kind of always been okay. So I am, and anyone that's known me, like, and beyond streaming too, and now people that have gotten to know me through streaming will know in person, online, whatever it is, I am a massive advocate for dream pursuance. Like no matter what you are, happiness and dream pursuance is like one of the most important things. I grew up, go to school, get a good education, get a job. I am not, that is, that is a social standard and that is not Mm -hmm. one I prescribe to. And I, I was so, Again, I, I never felt right doing that. And then when it came down to applying for colleges and stuff like that, I, I didn't even, I got in and because of the way the financial system works, I wasn't even able to actually get the money to go, which was crazy. I'm uh-huh. like, what? So it, regardless, uh, but, and I'm like, okay, that doesn't stop me though. I can still get into film. I can, it doesn't take a degree to do this. It doesn't take this. And so I just go after these things and I, and I'm one of the, God, I'm one of those people like, I love when people talk about themselves. I don't think we, I think it's so tap. We live in this world where it's taboo to talk about yourself and your achievements. I want to hear about all of them. I want to hear what you've done. What makes you happy? What makes you proud of yourself? What gives you that motivation to wake up and achieve again? And, and if I say someone is in a position where they can't, where they're mentally so inhibited in some way by an outside source or within, within themselves, if I can be the person that triggers so that they want to take a step towards it then i will be that i can be that person whether it's a blanket uh blanket thing like through a stream where i'm just chatting and i happen to say something third party that they're like oh that clicked or it's directly towards them if it's turned me into a person that wants to always stay in that mode because i never know who's listening Mm -hmm. because i never know who's gonna hear me because i don't know what i'm gonna say that pushes someone towards going and saying holy hell, I can do this. <laughs> like, and so, and it just, I, so it's, I've refined it since I started, but I was always that person. I, no, I wasn't always that person, but I, I actually, I don't know. I think one of the first jobs I ever told my mom I wanted to be was an artist. So when I was yeah. like four, I was like, I want to be an artist. And I, at first thought that was painting, you know, pictures. I didn't know what that meant. I was always <laughs> drawing and painting, but now, you know, look, I'm still an artist. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm making it work in whatever way possible. And I don't, I don't think I ever gave up on that idea. The one time that I did and I got into sales, I was like, what's happening to my body and my <laughs> life and my mind? And that even drove me further. Don't give up on those things because even if it's not your full-time career, it's way too important for our soul. It's way too important for who we are as people. And that could be... It doesn't even have to be art. That's the other thing too. Dreams are all about whatever you you dream of. It could be numbers at night because you can't wait to to wake up and work on that. You know those accounting things. Apparently, I'm not an accountant, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> For others out there, um, you know they, they're they're accounting and stuff like that because that's your dream. And I'm like, I'm so happy and I want to hear about it. Tell me about it. Uh, I, I'm so sick and tired of people feeling afraid about talking about themselves because I think that's a great way for people to get to know who you are and what you're passionate about. And I think passion is one of the most beautiful things we have. And so if I can make people feel more comfortable about that, that's my platform then. <laughs> I, 
Okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sorry, there's a lot to take in. Uh, like that. No, I mean, but that 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 um, encouraging for dream pursuits. It's something I try to focus mm-hmm. on with people as well. Where I'm like, look, I get the reality of life. I get the reality mm-hmm. that you know, yeah, you can't always pursue things headstrong, a hundred percent with all your being. Because yeah, you need to, you know, you need to get your your money. You need to get stuff, and particularly if you're going for something art related. That's mm-hmm. not always easy, but you've got to no. find ways to pursue your dream in different ways, different ways to uh, pull in that energy. It's what I, my wife worked the job that she enjoyed for a while, but she she worked it for six years. The last three years, she was slowly and slowly uh, losing interest, and it became a constant thing every night of her saying, oh, I wish I could paint. I wish I had time to do art. Sure. I wish I had time to do this, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then finally, I convinced her uh, this summer- uh, my birthday present was her, her quitting her job. It's an odd choice of a birthday present. I mind, uh, mind sure. you, because we, you know, now are zero income family with two kids for like three. Years. <laughs> but it brought, but I knew it would bring her happiness, which brings me happiness, right. kind of thing. And now she's been relearning piano, and she's actually right. been like pursuing art to a degree, to an extent. And she's even like been yeah. planning out a web comic she wants to do, and all these other things. And it's amazing. That like even with the stress of the financial stuff we're dealing with, it's like wow, you are just a thousand percent happier of a person just because you are pursuing. I love that this mm-hmm. thing that like is revitalizing you, and it's like yeah, mm-hmm. it's 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 just this wonderful transition. So I always say to people like, mm-hmm. don't necessarily take that harsh of a of a leap <laughs> as we yeah. did. We we uh, we we we, we, <laughs> we we measured and we weighed that and we checked our finances sure. and we did a lot of fucking research and <laughs> sure uh, I had a l- little bit higher hopes that I would have a job a little sooner, but still we 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 did all of our stuff. So like you know, do your due diligence to, to make things work. But even just minor things like you know you want to pursue art or you want to you know again as you were saying accounting or something like that whatever your passion is that you're not doing you know Mm -hmm. take some classes do some research something that frees you know that opens up your soul a little bit more yep i I, yeah i fully agree and you know it's so funny because i think well it's it's so crazy because now we live in a world where your say you have those three, four, or five major hobbies, and they all happen to produce little bits of income. Mm-hmm. I see so many friends and people now that that's how they live. They don't have a standard job anymore because their three, four, or five small bits of income uh, support them now. Mm-hmm. You know, and it doesn't. None of those make them a full time wage, but all together it does. And I'm like, that's so. It's so funny because that's so classic. That's what people used to do in a lot of cases. You know, they used to have. A small investment in a store here and then they, you know, paid a trader to take this product back and forth and then they were a farmer or had agriculture of some sort here and then they were also a writer and they wrote in the local newspaper here and none of those things would fully support them but all together mm-hmm. they would and if one, it's so much safer too because if one goes away, your whole income's not gone. Mm-hmm. And we're kind of shifting back to that in an even better way with the internet. And I love that. It makes me so happy to see that because you can have five hobbies to make a living wage now. And if you don't like one, you don't have to keep it anymore mm-hmm. and get tanked. Yep. It's it's amazing what you could do if you well, – what the problem, and that's the thing is, you know, you were saying – um but you were raised like much of us on the mentality of, you know, you, you go through high school, you go you go to college, you get a job, and whatever decision of what you wanted to choose when you were 18 years old is what you're doing the rest of your life and, you know, a deal kind of thing. And <laughs> sure. that's how a lot of us were. I was raised in a way more creative environment than a little bit of a privileged environment. And sure. I still was raised with that mentality of like, by society and like, stuff like that. Schools had that stigma. It was like, you don't know what you want to do yet? You're still in high oh, school? Yeah. You're in high school. You got to decide that soon. Well, that you, need was, to, you need to figure this out. <laughs> first day of college, you're asked, hey, what's your major? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, you come up with something and it's like, <laughs> that was the issue with my wife. She mm-hmm. wanted to be a veterinarian for her okay. entire childhood. She wanted to be a veterinarian. Sure. And that was always the thing. Oh, Charnel's going to be a veterinarian. Charnel's going to be a veterinarian. That was just this constant mm-hmm. thing. She went to college. She started um, a science degree and everything like that. And it was almost a full year into that. She's 19, a little over 19 years old. And she just suddenly just says to me, like, in tears one night, I just want to do art. I just want to do mm-hmm. painting. I don't want to do this. And she was 
petrified to tell her parents and it was i like not to liken this but literally being in that moment it was almost like someone mm-hmm. coming out of the closet it was like it, it, it was like she had identified as this scientist for so long that yeah. her identity was so wrapped up in that that suddenly she was you know coming forward as a creative minded person and it was mm-hmm. like this heartbreaking thing and uh, her parents did not react well they came around eventually but they did not react well friends sure. did not react and it was like this weird surrealistic thing which made me take a step back on my own things and be mm-hmm. like whoa <laughs> okay yeah, uh, yeah maybe we sure. shouldn't be telling people you have to know what you want to do and pe- I-, I have a four I and a half year old and people ask me all the time hey what are they going to be when they grow up and it's like i don't fucking know <laughs> Who the hell do you think I am to know what my my child, but not even me, would want to be? I, you know, <laughs> I didn't know I'd end up in the gaming industry, yeah. and now I'm now I'm trying to pursue jobs in the gaming industry because I want to ingrain myself in it mm-hmm. because I love it because I want to find something that's mutually um, beneficial to my stream and to someone else because I think if I find a product that I truly love, I can be an amazing representative of it. Yep. Yes. You know, because I'm not going to do it unless I really wholeheartedly believe in it and I'm honest about it. And I think that's another thing. Oh my goodness. People just be as, just be honest, bad and good. Be honest without over, don't overstate it too. Cause like, let's mm-hmm. be real. Like I have way too many, I know way too many people and I love them dearly, but they just post every last single problem they can on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, dude, but you know I'm here too, right? You know, you can call me and talk to me and then we can put down a more realistic tweet so that people don't think that's all you are. <laughs> but but it's, it is a balance. Of course, it's a balancing act. But sure. There's, I've never been disingenuous or dishonest with my community or anyone i've met and it's all in since i started this because i've done that before and i will wholly admit in in high school i was so afraid of who i was that i didn't ever want to let people in onto the reality of who i was because you know people as an artist especially people judge it i was so criticized they're like that's not real (laughs) <laughs> and I had a very small handful of friends that were like, you know, honestly, if someone can do it, it's going to be you. And they are the reason I kept to it. They are some of the reasons I stayed to it. And, um, you know, and I, and I'm like, I'm so glad I listened to them and not the others. And, and I did to some extent, but I got away from the others. You know, I stopped. Mm-hmm. I, I was, man, I was lying left and right about BS that happened outside of something. And I'm like, my own life is cooler <laughs> like than the stuff <laughs> I'm making up. But people don't want to hear about the real life stuff. And then you think they want to hear about the fake stuff, but and it's easier to take. And um, when someone's like, if someone says, oh, that's stupid or something, you're like, well, it wasn't real in the first place. And that's such a dumb mentality. And trust me, I talked about it in therapy and stuff, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I got that cleared. And uh, also, I'm 18. I'm a senior in high school. And people come up to me and they're like, hey, we know you're lying about all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, and, you know, you panic. And then realistic and just went into full on mode of like, wait a second. I should have been honest the whole time. And who, because if they don't like me when I'm honest, then they would never like me anyways. <laughs> and from then on out, it kind of just hit me. I'm like, okay, be, it doesn't matter if it comes off blunt, as long as there's finesse and it's real and it's honest, just be a genuine person. And I've stuck to that ever since. Yeah. I mean, I've talked about this on, I, that's, that's, I think that's a great way to go about it. I've talked about this on podcasts for the longest mm-hmm. time that I was a negative asshole for th- the first 30 years of my life. And then I had my first kid, looked at the kid, and I was like, oh, God, I don't want to be this person anymore <laughs> around the time of term. <laughs> right, I bet. And the, the, the thing is, what, one of the parts I, I sometimes talk about, don't always with this story, is the fact that. I never felt I was a negative person. I just mm-hmm. felt that was what was expected by my family. That was ex- what was expected sure. by society and the roles I'd been born into and a lot of things oh, that, that, yes. that this negativity. And I was wanted to be positive. And I got made fun of it and stuff like that. So I would play oh, yeah. this negative character and a lot of people saw through it and would try to be my friends. And then I would, you know, hype up the negativity just to push them away kind of thing. And then the thing is, over the last, you know, four plus years – I went from a person who literally couldn't like really maintain a friendship unless they were one of my wife's friends or something sure. like that to I now have a not even a small I have a very large circle of friends and people who yep. I text every day and talk about who know the real me or at least know like 95% of a real me because I still have sure. some issues with it but like uh but like still know this thing and I and people will say to me like Someone took me aside of PAX West and just went on this whole rant about positivity with me. And I was just like, what the fuck is going on? What, what, is, <laughs> what, is, what is this uh, kind of stuff? So it, it's yeah. it's amazing how much 
better your life can be if you're true to yourself and you're uh, mm-hmm. true to those experiences. And sometimes it can be hard depending what your true self mm-hmm. is, but the opportunities and what can be presented to you and what you find yourself doing is beneficial to, Absolutely. to, to take that leap. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I had, you took, you took, took like three different roads there. I'm like, I was like, <laughs> where, where are we? Like, ah, there was something else I wanted to, there was something else there, I wanted though. I want, there's something else I wanted to play off of that you said. I'm trying to remember now. Um, I just okay. I like the last thing I was to say on, that, uh, on this is you were talking about how you didn't see yourself moving like into the game industry. That was not like something, sure. and that was again like the same thing I think for Justin and myself, where like we mm-hmm. yeah, I think never we, thought it was possible. We right. both had the mentality of GameStop was the extent of our game industry experience. I worked at GameStop. <laughs> we know. Yep. Yeah. It, this is the GameStop crew. Yeah, I mean, just, <laughs> Justin did management. I was a seasonal I, employee who I think might still legally work for a GameStop. <laughs> I brand repped um, because I worked at a test store. Gotcha. And it was when I was modeling, too. So oh. I was like in super good shape. And they were like, <laughs> hey, you don't look like you work here. Put on this polo. And then I just got there like, hey, we'll give you a raise. And you're going to work with companies that come in to rep products and stuff. like." I was like, <laughs> what? And then I'm like, dude, I'm. I'm just as big of a nerd as you guys are. And they're like, that's what's in my boss. Literally was like, I know that's what's great. And he handed me a monster t-shirt and I, and I did all the brand repping at the test store for like monster and stuff like that. When we were doing that stuff and they gave me a weird position because of it. But before that, it was just two years of wanting discounts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think like, both, that's it. Yeah. I mean, that's I think why most of us got started GameStop kind of thing, but yeah, it, but like, I got to actually segue for a second. Justin's had a really good quote in here. There's a lot of great chatter going on uh, in our chat right now. For, yes. If you're not alive, but just the one thing Justin, you just said was college is where you find out what you don't want to do. I love that. And I love that <laughs> quote, but I just wanted to make sure I like, there's I a lot of for the comedy button, but yeah. <laughs> oh, whatever. I'll, this, we, we, we can credit comedy, button, but I mean, that is literally what, uh, what the experience is like. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, like any of the game industry, I thought I was, I had the mentality of, I'm going to be a writer. And then what the, Mm -hmm. what does that even mean once you get old enough? And like, that is such a broad based thing uh, (laughs) that doesn't really mean much of anything. And I, you know, and then it ended up being in the last two years, I'm like, I want to do PR. Like, Like, I want to do marketing. Like, that's actually, and somebody, I I made a comment and somebody just said to me, it was like, aren't you already doing that? They, they thought that was already the career I was in and any kind of thing. Be, and I'm like, R- people see it before you do kind of thing. It's like, am uh, I? <laughs> well, it's what Kevin kind of did for me too. He grabbed me and he's like, no, you'd be good at doing this. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm like, so we like- had the same thing. I've known Kevin for a little while and it was at, um, <sighs> PAX East, I was drinking with him and I made, and I was already like pursuing, I already like uh, talked to someone with an interview for PR and stuff like that. And I made this comment to him where I'm just like, I kind of like, I wonder if I'd be decent like marketing and PR because I'd actually uh, shadowed him for a little while doing his, you know, account executive kind of thing and talking mm-hmm. you know, sales kind of thing. And I was like, I wonder if I'd be good at like the PR, mar- you know, side of marketing and things like that. And he just looked at me, he's like, You've literally been doing that as long as I have known. He was the person who said to me, you have been doing this as long as I've known you. Go get paid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it was like, yes. I guess I'll go get a job in the game. And he was the one who made <laughs> me make that post on Twitter. Like, literally, he's right. been harassing me to do it. He, he made me make that post. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, we have we have the same uh, muse. <laughs> yes. That's like exactly. Yeah. No, it, that's so funny, too, because, you know, and um, I, I got really fortunate uh, like, okay. So like, it is that balance of like hard work, skill and luck Mm -hmm. when you're in this. And, um, it's really funny because I think we mentioned trouble truck earlier and I'm plugging him again, apparently, (laughs) but he actually made a whole post about that. And it resonated so deeply with me. And I'm like, okay, I I know based on what people have told me (laughs) mostly because I am a, my own critic and I beat myself up sometimes, but I know I have the skill to keep doing this. I know I'm putting in the hard work. I guess now I just got to, give myself the opportunity to be lucky and and it's so crazy because my biggest attribute i will if anyone asks what what has been the biggest growth point of my since i started in this industry it's talking i never stop talking to people i dm people i get a hold of people i chat with people i email i do whatever i can and it landed me well my fiance actually the lady cuddle bear made a tweet about me and I happened to just randomly comment. It was super funny. Before I DM'd 
Kev, someone like, uh, before I DM'd Kevin, I happened to comment on one of his posts and then I DM'd him and then Care Lee by happenstance made a post about me. He saw that post and was like, the way she talked about you is the reason I wanted to continue talking about you or into you. And then that pure twist of luck, boom, he grabbed mm-hmm. me and then he hasn't let go. Yep. And I was like, what? And you just got to keep putting yourself out there and eventually in whatever angle. And for me, I like being around people and I like talking as you can probably see. You did a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. M- and- not minor thing. Look at look at here we are now. I'm on a podcast with you guys. Yeah, well, that's and that's <laughs> yeah. aw. That's I mean that's like the, but but that's the thing people ask us. Oh, how did you get this guest or this guest in the podcast? And it's yep. like I emailed them, or mm-hmm. I saw they were at an, I saw they were at a party and an event, mm-hmm. and I went to the party and I managed to get myself in to talk to them. It's like yeah, but, but but how'd you know what to say to them? Like well, I didn't know what to say to them. I just talked to them like they were a human being for a while, and then I was like, hey, I do this oh, show. Do you want to come on it? I stopped prepping. <laughs> Yes. yes just yeah. oh man everyone's yes. human yes just go talk it's what i did the whole weekend at tcon mm-hmm. like i was at tcon all the stuff all the movement i made at tcon was outside of the convention and oh, it was just absolutely. chatting with people that's it i just walked up to people i'm like hey you having a good time are you doing okay you need anything like how are you i am Aiden or whatever and i just ask them questions about themselves because i'm one genuinely interested and two it makes people feel amazing because they do and they deserve to and it could go nowhere for me i don't care if i made their night then then it it did benefit me because they may go talk to someone who is in a bad mood that ends up talking to me later and because of that ripple effect and i'll never know they're in a good mood by the time i get to them mm-hmm. well it's like the nice butterfly effect of positivity that's mm-hmm. what i always say to people like well what do you do if you know you knew you went to a party and you invite someone in the podcast and they said sure and you had a nice conversation and then you literally and then they they never get back to you it's like i hope they had a nice night yeah like, what, right. what of it okay like yes would that person yep. been fun to talk to sure but sure. i already talked to them and we had a nice conversation yes. and they left the conversation smiling yeah. beyond that <laughs> You know, maybe I'll bump into them at another point in my life and we can mm-hmm. reminisce or I'll never see them again. But maybe they, as you said, talk to someone else and put a smile on their face. We put a smile on someone else's yes. face. And, you know, we live in a really sh- shitty world. Let's <laughs> just bring a, just bring some smiles to people is enough for me. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. 100% I agree. Yeah, so it's you know you, you got to bring that joy in places, and uh, uh, I was gonna say when you know around this point in the show as we start wrapping up, I usually do a wholesome moment of the week, and I've actually okay. was branching out uh, with a wholesome moment uh, just uh, to see if people respond on Twitter, which we didn't really get any responses this week. It's a new thing we're doing, but I'm actually gonna say my wholesome moment of the week is this show. <laughs> this it is. Show. I was gonna hundred hey, percent agree I with that. It. I love it. <laughs> like Same. this episode is like might be legitimately the most wholesome episode we Yay! have ever had. Oh, I love it. I'm so happy about that. <laughs> so, so thank you, Aiden, for joining for that. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, it's been a it's been a good night. Is there uh, yes. anything else before we kind of wrap up? I'm kind of getting to this point where I think my stomach is audibly growling because my wife is cooking something <laughs> delicious and it started seeping into the room. Oh no, it's dangerous! I it's, ate a I ate before, so I learned. Yeah, uh, I yeah, our, our dinner time is late, so it's it's <laughs> not an option for me, sadly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so is there anything else you feel you would like to tackle uh, or to talk about in the <laughs> show before we get to wrap up point? Any thing else before we get to like plugging your stuff that you feel people should know about you or your community? Man, um, I know it's a very broad question, but it is. But that's no, that's totally fine. I. <laughs> Not really. I mean, we kind of discussed a lot of it. I mean, mm-hmm. mostly whenever someone comes by, I don't want anyone, and I know a lot of people are, this This is not This is not some act. If you see me in person, I am this way too. If you want a hug, give me a hug. If you're, if you, if like, you can literally just go, Aiden, I know you from online. I'm like, I don't know you. Are you hugging me? Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> like, I don't care. Like, I don't know your face because you're just, a, you chill in my chat and I've never seen it or whatever it is. But my, my thing is, is that, I'm never, never not down for discussion and stuff. Always coming and talk. Just, you know, I know it's so nerve wracking for some people to message in Discord and chat. But when I say my DMs are open, I genuinely mean it. It doesn't mean Mm -hmm. I can get to you within the hour, but it means I'll get to you. I always check them and I will always try to maintain that for most of my career. And I know there's going to be a point where I'll have to be more open sourced on like a Discord and things like that. And I know that's the reality eventually, but 
but I'm always open to chat in, in my streams. I'm always open to chat in any source that I'm available in. And I, I think that's just way too important to not have that. And I'm not a different person in any of those capacities. So in person or not, I'm approachable the same way. So <laughs> good. I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, that's, that's good. I, I, pre- I, again, it's nothing I appreciate. It's you are who you are. Um, so then where can people find you? On the internet, sure. uh, where can people find you? And then you talked about events, any, and then also any upcoming events you might be traveling to that people, I don't know, could see sure. you at. So I am at. I just heard there's, that. <laughs> yeah, and there's someone outside. Um, I'm at Lord <laughs> Lord Cuddlebear everywhere. You can find me at um, literally just Lord Cuddlebear on Twitter, Twitch. Uh, Twitter and Twitch are my main sources. Uh, I haven't launched my YouTube yet. That's the next thing I'll talk about here in a second. But, and Instagram. Those are my main right now. It's Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm at Lord Cuddlebear. And big thing, uh, so I will be at DreamHack Atlanta. Ooh. I will be down there. I'll see you there. More yep. sense for me to go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, uh, I, so for me, I will, let's be real. I'll be at most every event leading up to E3. Um, I'm pretty much being coaxed into into going to every single one of them. And I'm like, okay. And I saw such a boost from Decon. And that was the first one. I was like, okay, I may as well keep going. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just making contact. It's worth way more than whatever expense I have. Um, so I will be at pretty much every event leading up to E3. I'll be at the pack, different packs. I'll be at DreamHack and then probably E3 and all that. Um, so you can always find me there. Um, YouTube. So my YouTube, I was highly advised and I'm... I'm going to be all over on as many other channels as I can be. I'm hoping I'm hoping to be a part of other, other shows and stuff leading up to it. And I will be launching my own YouTube with, uh, my own offline, um, back and forth interviews on YouTube in the new year. So in the new year, that'll Mm -hmm. launch. And there'll also be comedy skits i actually found some film friends that are like so we're going to i have a new series i guess this will be the first place i talk about it i'm okay with this um it's called uh, <laughs> um uh killers in the castle and okay. it's it's me lord cuddlebear living with all of the dead by daylight killers <laughs> <laughs> so Delightful. as my roommates and so that's the new series i've been writing as just like a short two to three minutes uh, fun series on YouTube. And so that'll be January. And yeah. And then I got a bunch of new stuff coming to stream too. Tons of new. It's completely getting overhauled. So uh, it's all the same brand. It's just getting improved for once. Thanks. Really. Yeah. You just spruce it up a little <laughs> bit here and there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much it. That's what's going on with me. <laughs> well, outstanding. Uh, I seems like I'm going to see you a lot in the <laughs> upcoming year because yes, uh, I I'm was so not excited. going to DreamHack Atlanta until uh, we had uh, Aaron from DreamHack on last week who told us a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, Sh- I got to be yeah. there for this. Uh, Dude, so that I'm gonna, guy, yes. Yeah, so I'm going to be pretty much every U- major U.S. gaming related thing I'm through yes. E3 next year. I will be at as well. So uh, particularly if I get a job, <laughs> one of these jobs people keep talking about. Yes, one of one of these one of these things. <laughs> one of they, these they things where people income <laughs> where people give me money to do things I'm good at. What? Hmm. Uh, yeah. So so yeah. <laughs> Uh, so it's awesome. Uh, as yep. far as Constant Calibering goes, thank you all for joining us this week. The Constant Calibering podcast is live every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, right here on Mixer.com slash ConcallPod. Wow, that, that almost didn't come out right. <laughs> uh, come join us Wednesday nights at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern for the Catch-All Gaming Podcast, where Justin and myself, Justin hosts, we talk about uh, essentially our, what, uh, our gaming water cooler, where we yep. talk about uh, gaming reviews, previews, and mm-hmm. news. Tomorrow night, we are going to have- Gundam and Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 all the time. Every please time, stop. Every I beg of you, please stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Please, please stop. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna have tomorrow night. Uh, uh, we're gonna have joining us uh, Brad Coggins. Uh, you know, does been with Constant Calibrating for years. Going to be joining us to uh, talk about a bunch of different things and also talk about all the Bethesda controversy. So if you're watching um, live, sh- wait, which one? I mean, uh, Blizzard. Biz- Blizzard. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Ooh, Blizzard. I didn't know what it was. So I was the Blizzard controversy. Oh, Blizzard controversy is the thing. That's, I'm. Yeah, I was. I do. I mean, to that. be fair, Bethesda still probably has a controversy, but uh, that's it, why it's I did. A- that. <laughs> 
fair assumption they Love have them. one as well. But nothing is as big as the Blizzard one right now. So we're going to be uh, tackling that a little bit. So come join us if you're uh, watching this live and hearing this. And if you're watching this or listening to this on the recorded, it's already up on YouTube.com slash ConcalPod where you can find pretty much the rest of our stuff. We are on Facebook, facebook.com slash constant calibrating, Twitter at concalpod. I'm at bear punch. Justin is at Justin underscore glorious. Check Instagram, instagram.com slash constant calibrating. Come chat with us on discord at constantly calibrating.com slash discord. <laughs> Please make sure to leave us a review wherever you're able to. It really does help to get the podcast in front of more people, helps us get into events, helps with a lot of things. Uh, Apple Podcasts helps the most with that, but we're also on Spotify and just about everywhere else you can imagine. Uh, and with that, yeah, we thank you for uh, joining us for the birth of the Bear Cinematic Universe. Yes. And with that, <laughs> we bid you a good sign off. <laughs>